For this problem, we're asked to find the average rate of change for the function uh, f of x equals the opposite of x squared plus 3x minus 6 going from uh, an x sub 1 of 1 to x sub 2 of 3. So this is a quadratic function that we're being asked to find the average rate of change. So first we have to recall the average rate of change formula and I'm going to abbreviate average rate of change, ARC. And that is equal to the change in the outputs, which would be the function's value at x sub 2 minus the function's value at x sub 1, divided by the difference in the input values, the x's, x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So we need to find, uh, let's see, we, we know our x sub 2 and our x sub 1, but we need to find our f of x sub 2 and our f of x sub 1. So we'll start with the f of x sub 2, which for this problem is 3. So we put 3 in everywhere there's an x in the problem. So again, this is the opposite of 3 being squared. And notice I put the negative on the outside, the 3 on the inside, which tells us about our order of operations. So when we come back for the next step, we'll talk about that. Plus 3 times the input of 3 minus 6. Okay, so order of operations say to do a power first, so we're going to do the square first and then we'll deal with the opposite sign. So basically that negative or opposite sign comes right down and we do 3 times 3 which gives us 9. And notice the net result of that is a negative 9. Plus 3 times 3 is positive 9 and then minus 6. So the 9 and negative 9 add to 0 and that just gives us negative 6. So our f of x sub 2 or our, our function's value in x is 3 is negative 6. Now we'll do the same thing for f of x sub 1. So for this problem, x sub 1 is 1. We're going to replace every occurrence of x with 1. So just like we did with 3, we're going to do the same thing for 1. And now our order of operations, again, 1 squared, 1 times 1 is 1. Bring down the negative and 1, and the net result is a negative 1. Plus 3 times 1 is 3 minus 6, and if we put that all together, let's see, the negatives give us negative 7 plus 3 for a net result of negative 4. Okay, so now we're ready to put this all together. Our f of x sub 2 is negative 6. Our f of x sub 1 is negative 4. So let's get a little room here. And average rate of change equals. So our f of x sub 2 again is negative 6 minus f of x sub 1 a negative 4. So again I'm being careful minus a negative keeping them separate divided by the x value so that would be 3 take away 1. Okay so we've put all our numbers together now our job is to simplify this average rate of change. So we'll move that on up so we have some room to do that. So in the numerator, we have a minus, a negative. That will turn to plus a positive. So now we have negative 6 plus 4. That gives us a negative 2 divided by 3 minus 1, 2. That reduces to a negative 1 to 1. That would be a, a slope or losing 1 on the output for every 1 on the input. Or more simply stated, just negative 1. Okay, now what I'd like to do next is take a look at what this looks like in a graph. So first thing we need to do is get some room. Again, keep in mind, actually, let's write it, the average rate of change was negative 1 to 1. Okay, so now let's get a graph, see what the a graph of that function looks like, and then what this average rate of change looks like. Okay, so now that we have a graph, and again, this is the graph of uh, f of x equals the opposite of x squared plus 3x minus 6. Notice it's a parabola facing down. And the two locations we were talking about, um, let's see, x sub 1 was uh, 1, and you'll notice at 1 we have the point 
1, negative 4 on the graph. And then f of x sub 2 was 3, and at 3 we have negative 6 on the graph. So we have those two points. And what we're interested in knowing is what's their average rate of change. So what we're going to do is draw a line that connects these two points. So we'll start at, at the point 1, negative 4, and as best I can, we'll draw a straight line connecting uh, with the other point 3, negative 6. And what we've learned from the average rate of change is that to get from one point to the other, we would come down one and right one, down one and right one. That is the slope or of this connecting line, which is called the secant line, is negative one to one. So we can confirm that given this graph, the slope of the secant line, which is the average, geometric representation of the average rate of change, is negative one.